So Phil Spencer was on Kind of Funny's X-Cast, and we learned a lot about his state of mind surrounding Xbox and Redfall, but I more so wanted to focus on that mind-blowing statement at the very end that we need to discuss. Now, this was rather fortuitous for Kind of Funny because Phil was a planned guest. It just so happened to fall smack dab in the middle of all this controversy, but I must commend Phil going on to a podcast having to respond to tough questions and not being able to prepare the exact answer that your PR team has deemed will be the most ideal for your brand at that moment is something I give Phil props for. The XCast team did a great job diving right into the problems surrounding Xbox lately. And don't let this video be a replacement for that interview. Please go and watch it. It's well worth your time. The interview opened up asking about the CMA blocking Microsoft's Activision Blizzard purchase, but no new developments were shared there. So let's jump right into the other disappointing news surrounding Xbox last week, which was Redfall. And I want to summarize this a bit before I want to get into what I feel is the most important part of this interview, which was Phil's final statements. Now, Phil addresses the game by expressing his disappointment and taking responsibility throughout the interview. One of the more fascinating questions came from Paris, who asked Phil about the decision-making process behind whether or not to delay a game. And Phil's answer, what? A bit of a disappointment because I was interested in an actual answer to this question, but he sort of dances around it for a bit. He doesn't really directly address why the game was not delayed, instead implying that the game internally met their goals, which was delivering on the vision the team had set out. But Phil completely overlooked the fact that the game was obviously not ready to launch. I wish the XCast team would have asked Phil about physical copies of the game that had 60 FPS already printed on the back, but stickers were added to warn consumers that it wouldn't be available at launch. This in and of itself is proof that there was internal confusion with this release where a feature seemed to be ready to go for the printers, but was not actually ready in time. Now, Phil Spencer also claims that the internal mock reviews of the game had Redfall rated much higher than it was publicly, claiming that they expected according to Phil Spencer, a minimum double-digit increase on the Metacritic. So internally, they were expecting a minimum 75. Now, this is a game that you can clearly see needed more time in the oven. But overall, I felt like its ingredients were flawed to begin with. Even if this game was polished, it still suffers from an identity crisis that has existed from the very beginning when marketing failed to establish what the game actually was and gamers filled in the blanks, an expectation of a Left 4 Dead style game, only to be told it's something closer to Borderlands. Something clearly went wrong in the middle of this game's development. Now, Arcane Austin is not some ragtag indie studio that was just put together. We're talking about a team with a proven solid track record. And history has shown us time and time again that games from amazing teams usually fail because the people at the front of the ship sent them in conflicting directions, forcing the game to be finished without a solid identity. This is something that 60 frames per second is not going to fix. And while in this interview, Phil confirms the team is working on improving the game and shipping the promised performance mode, I wouldn't expect a completely different experience from the one players have had at launch. They're going to sand down the edges, but I don't think it's going to be this sort of renaissance. I think ZeniMax and Xbox will both internally write this off as a loss. I don't think all of a sudden the bad AI is going to be miraculously fixed, for example. The amount of money and resources just wouldn't be worth it. And I think Xbox is going to agree they're better off taking the L and moving forward. Now, after Redfall's horrible launch, fans have expressed doubt about Starfield having a successful launch. Phil tried to calm down the masses a bit by confirming that Starfield received more developer assistance compared to Redfall, and Phil confirmed that they could have done a better job supporting Arcane Austin during the game's development. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now, let's get to what I considered a sort of baffling, mind-blowing quote from Phil, which sort of boiled down to this position that Xbox does not have the capacity to compete with PlayStation and Nintendo. So Phil begins by addressing the fact that Xbox has fully embraced the play anywhere strategy and follows it up by saying, quote, we're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. Now, this is a great point, one that I've brought up several times on the podcast. Xbox's goal and shift over the last few years have been more towards attracting consumers to their ecosystem more so than just a box that you plug into your TV. But he then follows that up with this quote, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. I know that will upset a ton of people. But the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are, 
and have in certain cases very discreet focus on doing deals and other things that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team. That's on us, not on anybody else. Now, Phil implies that part of PlayStation and Nintendo's strength are not only their position in the market, but more so in Sony's case, the negative impact on Xbox that third-party exclusivity deals have had, such as Final Fantasy 16 coming out very soon. This sort of dejected outlook by the head of this company was very surprising to hear. This is like if the Warriors were down 20 at the beginning of the fourth quarter and a microphone picked up Steve Kerr telling his team, yeah, there's nothing we can do to win. We just can't compete. We might as well not even try. There's nothing stopping Xbox from picking up their competitors' best practices and adding them to their own playbook. While it's true that Sony has increased their aggression within the last generation when it comes to third-party partnerships, this doesn't take Xbox out of any race, especially because Sony found themselves in that position with the PlayStation 3. At one point, Xbox 360 was the holy land of third-party partnerships. That generation was arguably remembered more for its third-party games than first-party games like Gears of War, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Mass Effect, Bioshock, Condemned, Saints Row, Lost Odyssey, among many others. Sony didn't just accept that Xbox won the hearts and minds of publishers. They went back to the drawing board and figured out a way to attract more games over to their platform. There's nothing stopping Xbox from aggressively rebuilding those bridges and figuring out why they're unable to attract more publishers. While we can point the figure at Sony for keeping Final Fantasy 16 and the 7 remake of Xbox, we can only point the figure at Xbox when it comes to missing the rest of Square Enix's lineup. That breakdown in communication between your platform and one of the industry's predominant publishers is an Xbox issue and one you have to seek to Repair. Sony has also outmaneuvered Xbox when it comes to working out marketing partnerships with small and big games alike. Sifu, Chia, Kenna Bridge of Spirits, Hogwarts Legacy, Resident Evil 4. There are already rumors brewing that Sony is the marketing partner for the highly anticipated Mortal Kombat 12. This is a game of chess. Sony isn't winning because they have more money or because their pieces are more powerful than Xbox's. Sony is dominating the conversation because they're outplaying you. You need a better strategy and saying there's no way you can compete and must accept third place is never the answer. Phil also says, quote, I see comments out there that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not True, that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden, you're going to see console sales shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation, where everybody built their digital library of games. But this idea that if we just focus more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't really lend to the reality of most. Like 90% of people every year that walk into retail to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems. The digital library is there. There is no world where Starfield is an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. Nintendo has this internal saying that is consistently whispered within the walls of the company, and that is software sells hardware. It's not even an opinion. It's a fact. Imagine your iPhone without its apps. It's a thousand dollar paperweight. I think Phil Spencer is one of the smartest minds within our industry. Absolutely. One of the key reasons Xbox is as successful as it is now. I think anyone saying he should step down after Redfall's release when just a few months ago he was universally praised for Hi-Fi Rush and Game Pass is ridiculous. And with all that being said, I can't believe these words came out of his mouth. Makes me feel like this was a byproduct of some of the pressure he must be feeling. It's just not a great time for the company. But Phil's claims that the eighth generation of consoles, the one that Xbox One failed in, was such a massive blow to the company that it makes it unrecoverable for the brand is a preposterous statement. Especially when you remember that that eighth generation also included one of our industry's largest failures, the Nintendo Wii U, which ironically enough, was a follow-up to one of our industry's largest successes, the Nintendo Wii. You guys remember that? Alongside the Nintendo 3DS, which within six months saw an eye-watering $80 price cut, and within nine months, the Wii U saw a $50 price cut. Both of these launch failures caused President Iwata and other company directors to take pay cuts as the exclamation point to taking responsibility. Fans were calling this the end of Nintendo, theorizing that they will be forced to go the way of Sega, become a software publisher 
But Nintendo didn't just accept their fate. The Wii U sold an embarrassing 13 million consoles in its lifetime, a number that the Nintendo Switch surpassed within its first two years. And now, Nintendo Switch hardware and software have outsold the 3DS and Wii U combined. They pivoted, they learned from their mistakes, and they did it all while facing the same issues that Phil is claiming Xbox can't recover from. Nintendo has no digital legacy. Those Wii U and 3DS games could not be transferred to the Switch, a feature that Phil claims is crippling for Xbox. Nintendo Switch also doesn't rely on third-party releases for hardware sales. That's the icing on the cake, but everybody is buying Nintendo Switch for the software, first party, Super Mario Odyssey, Super Smash Brothers, Legend of Zelda, Animal Crossing. Those games are moving hardware. Sure as hell isn't Call of Duty, FIFA, and Elden Ring, right? Nintendo's successes prove Phil wrong. They turned it around because they built great games, period. Same could be said for PlayStation, who doesn't even rely on nostalgia or legacy IPs in the same way that Nintendo does. PlayStations are primarily moving because of recent IPs, not Sly Cooper and Jack and Daxter, right? Spider-Man, Horizon, Returnal, Ghost of Tsushima. They're constantly pivoting and reacting to market demands, but the end result remains the same. Software sells hardware. I think one of the craziest parts of what Phil said is this concept that consumers' minds are set in stone. You pick one of the three and that's it. If another platform has a game you want, you sell your console to hop over there. This runs counter to Xbox's ecosystem philosophy where software and Game Pass is supposed to attract you into their ecosystem, not just get you to buy a box. Those were the old days, right? You are either a Genesis kid or a Nintendo kid. It's not like that anymore. And don't let the Xbox and Sony stands fool you. A lot of gamers are just like me. We buy multiple consoles because they each allow us to access unique software. Hardware is not the selling point. This is like if Netflix gave up because they need to create shows that will cause someone to stop using Disney Plus to use Netflix. We are closer to the end economy, not the or economy, especially with Xbox. I can access Star field through a PC. Even if mine isn't powerful enough, I can stream it. Microsoft is partnering with the Asus ROG Ally, a system that does way more than just play Xbox games. That's a companion console that theoretically could also access PlayStation games. Xbox's goal shouldn't be about getting someone to just buy their box. It's not about outselling your competition anymore. It's more about convincing people why you also need to be a part of my ecosystem. The Nintendo Switch isn't a console replacement. The Switch is a console you buy to access Nintendo's unique library, but one that cannot replace the other big three. They found a unique place to be in. Switch may not be your first primary console purchase, but it's a great secondary companion to fill out your needs. Funny enough, that's what the Series S is for. That is one of its primary selling points, next generation games at an accessible price. Xbox has openly expressed an intent to open an Xbox mobile store. And let's say that theoretically happens on iOS. Their biggest competitor will be the App Store and Apple Arcade. The quickest way to get people to visit the Xbox store is not a better UI. It's going to be attracting developers to stock your shelves and delivering better games and unique experiences. For a console that is severely lacking in compelling software, the last thing you want to hear as a fan is the head of the brand claiming that building great games won't turn things around for Xbox. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know down in the comments how you felt about this interview. And thank you guys so much for watching.